The other day, I was having a conversation with my wife, and she commented uh, and said that I like to do some weird things. <laughs> Does that surprise you that I like to do weird things? I like to do things that are a little bit different. And we talked about some of those things that I like to do that maybe she perceives to be a little unorthodox and a little different. And I'll give you an example of one of those things. Uh, this year for Administrative Assistance Day, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I, I, I gave the office staff some <laughs> Nerf guns that apparently don't work very well. She's reloading. She's reloading. <laughs> now. I did. I, I, I did buy my, the guns that I bought for myself. I have four uh, cartridge for four, and there, there's only have three. So, so I have one extra, one extra uh, piece of ammunition there. Uh, what's that? Yeah, <laughs> we gotta be, we got to be careful with those, right? Now, probably a more customary gift would have been something like, like flowers, right? Flowers would have been a nice gift for Administrative Assistance Day, okay? But why didn't I get flowers? Why did I get something silly like these Nerf guns? And, and the answer is, well, I wanted to do something different. And we have a relationship with each other that says that, that uh, we can have fun together in that way. It was, it, it was a, I think, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, I thought it was a kind of a meaningful gift. Was it a meaningful gift? Yes, it's great for certain <laughs> was, was it a meaningful gift? Okay. So, and, and the reason, by the way, that it's meaningful for them is because sometimes they come around the corner when I'm working on something and they'll, they'll just shoot me, right? So, so in, in that regard, it is, it, it's a meaningful, but it, it matches the relationship that we have. You know, flowers are perfectly appropriate. This matched our relationship a little better, I thought. Okay. And so, as my wife and I were having this conversation, I said something to her that she hadn't heard before. And she said, where did that come from? And I said, what I said was, don't yuck my yum. Don't yuck my yum. And she said, where did don't yuck my yum come from? I said, well, that's, that's what the kids are saying these days. I just, you know, I just got back not that long ago from a week with kids at camp. And don't yuck my yum. And what does, what does that mean to not yuck someone's yum? Well, it means that if someone likes something, and that, that thing, whatever that is, doesn't hurt someone else, then just because you don't like it, don't tell that other person that they can't like the same thing. Does that make sense? Don't yuck my yum. If something is, is yum to me and it's yuck to you, you don't have to poison my yum by making me yuck that yum. I guess I, just, to, just to complicate it even more, right? So I'm sure that all of us have some yums that we don't want other people to yuck. Do we have some examples. Does anybody have some things that maybe are guilty pleasures that, that you don't like to tell people that you do because, what was that? Warm tapi. Warm well, uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's one that people might say, uh, but, but if you like it, it doesn't hurt me, right? Right? What's that? Miracle Whip on saltines. Okay, so those are, those are some, yeah, I'm going to yuck on those yums because those <laughs> What are, what are some other examples? What, what, what are some other things that we do or we like that other people don't like? And they reality, reality TV. Well, I, I, I like reality TV too. I, <laughs> I, I tell people my wife likes it, but like, what's what's the latest episode of Teen Mom that you've got to watch? <laughs> those, those, what, are there others? Are there others that that we can think of? Limburger cheese. Okay, all right. Well, we got feet. <laughs> what else? What else? 
Jalapenos on spam. Okay, all right. Okay, well, we, we've got... So, so what I'm getting at here is we've all got things that we enjoy, and maybe other people don't enjoy them as much as we do, right? But jelly beans? Who, who doesn't like jelly beans? Everybody likes jelly beans. Right? Oh, one person does Okay, one person doesn't like jelly beans. So, so, so... A lot of people don't like... Okay, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. A lot of people don't like jelly beans. Okay. Well, today... What? Lettuce and tomatoes. <laughs> Mike does not like lettuce and tomatoes. <laughs> Among other things. And today we're celebrating uh, a guy who had a lot of people who were trying to yuck his yums. Okay. And that's our patron saint, John the Baptist. Now, locusts and honey, well, the honey part I can go for, but the locusts, I don't know. And, and John the Baptist, by the way, uh, he didn't get his moniker by being part of the Baptist convention. Right? He, he, it wasn't like, you know, Tim the Episcopalian and John the Baptist. Right? He was John the Baptizer. And by the way, you didn't think we would celebrate John the Baptist without doing a little renewal of our baptism, did you? Did you, did you, think, you, were, did you think you were getting away with, without getting some water sprinkled on you? <laughs> F- Father Henry here is going to help me, and, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna celebrate John the Baptist together by renewing our uh, baptismal vows together with no, with no Nerf guns. This, this, is, this is water. It's holy water. It's holy water. So that the more the, the more that it gets on you, the better. <laughs> We've got people shielding themselves. <laughs> Forgot my shoes. Oh well, I thought about wearing them. Now, I have a feeling that, that this side got a little more soaked than that side, so I'm going to go over here. <laughs> That's another one of those silly things that, that, uh, that I do. Thank you for helping me, Father Henry. By the... Oh. <laughs> All right. So, now we've, now we've done our due diligence and we've celebrated John the Baptist feast day. Now, we get to celebrate our patron saint. And there are two John the Baptist feast days. One of them is, is this week that we're celebrating today. And the other day is August 29th. And we get to choose between those two. August 29th is the, uh, the feast day of the beheading of John the Baptist. June 23rd is the feast of the nativity of John the Baptist. So I took the liberty of deciding <laughs> that of those two observances, we were going to celebrate the nativity of John the Baptist. I think it's a little more joyful to celebrate the nativity than the beheading. So, so, so you're welcome. You're welcome for that. Okay. And patron saints that parishes are named after have an influence on how those parishes live in their lives of faith. I'll give you some examples. Uh, St. Mary's, for instance. Any parish that has the name St. Mary's tends to be a little more what we call Anglo-Catholic in its identity. And we have a St. Mary's that's just, uh, just a few miles this way behind me here. And there's another St. Mary's in, in our diocese. And that St. Mary's, uh, they use a lot of incense, and they have a lot of candles everywhere, and they sing a lot of Marian hymns, and every day in the evening they pray a prayer called the Angelus Prayer, that is a prayer to the Blessed Mother. And so their identity uh, really focuses on their patron saint, Mary the Virgin. Okay? And for us, it means, well, I lose my microphone here, but I think it means we get to have some fun. We get, to, we get to do some things that, that maybe other places might say, well, why are they doing that? Like we get to wear uh, Hawaiian shirts, for instance. We do, we do that a lot. Right? 
instead of more formal attire. And that's, that's one of our yums. That's one of our yums. And it may not work everywhere. Some churches might not have that same kind of style choice going for them. But don't yuck our yum. Because we like to do fun things, don't we? Okay. And one of those things that we like to do here is we like to make sure that we're following in John's footsteps. And we want to make sure that we are welcoming everyone. And that includes, and maybe even especially, people who haven't felt welcome in other places and at other times. I haven't always felt welcome everywhere I've been in my life. Have you? Have you always felt welcome everywhere you've been, every time you've gone someplace? What, what are some examples of a time maybe you didn't feel so welcome in a place? Do you have some examples? What, what's an example? When my partner was dying, I was Okay, so in, in, a, in a hospital room, you weren't welcome. Okay, and that's uh, for, for a disagreement of, of uh, understanding, really, of understanding someone. So that, that, that doesn't sound terribly welcoming. Are there other examples people want to throw out there? What's an example? Okay, 50th high school reunion, and why is that? Because we all, there were the, the jocks and the freaks, and the, <laughs> the, popular, the popular people, and then the wallflowers. So they're, and so they're, they're playing, uh, they're playing 50 year, old, 50 year old drama records, huh? <laughs> okay, is there one more, one more? What, what's another example? Okay, so, so because of our life circumstances, uh, and it seems like a lot of these have to do with our life circumstances, which is even, which is even more painful, because those are some things that, that are just pieces of ourselves that people are rejecting, and, and that doesn't feel so good, right? But I think, uh, think St. John's does a pretty good job. You know, we're not perfect, we're not perfect, and we have a lot of growing we can still do, but we try our best to foster a community of welcome. Welcome extends to everyone. Right? And that's, that's one way that I think our patron saint uh, gives us some influence on how we exercise our faith life here. Okay? And when we have visitors who come in the door, we want to make sure that they feel welcome and that they want to stick around. Okay? And there's a secret. When somebody comes in the door, there's a secret to getting that person to want to stay. I'll tell you what that secret is. You put them to work. <laughs> you put them to work. Now, it, so it sounds funny. It sounds funny. But it, it's actually true, right? In all seriousness, uh, ministry is a big piece of that church puzzle. Okay? And the best way to get someone to stay in a church home is if that person finds two friends and a ministry. Two friends and a ministry. And if you find two friends and a ministry at a church, you're much more likely to call that church your church home. Okay? Because that creates a sense of, of ownership. Ownership for the church. Okay? And... and in fact, this, this is your church. This is not my church. This is your church. You are the owners of this church. And I think you do a pretty good job of owning this church and taking responsibility for us. And if you want to see an example of what I'm talking about, uh, when you're in the parish hall, there is a poster that has a tree on it with leaves representing... Uh, thousands of dollars that we've collected for our capital campaign. Each leaf represents $1,000. And right now, if you go look at that tree, there are 120 leaves on that tree. $120,000 so far that has been raised by you, by you for uh, caring for your church home. So, so I think that is something that ought to be commended. So thank you for that. Thank you for all your effort. And, and uh, not that long ago, we had a, a golf tournament that, that you put on. You did the golf tournament, okay? And you raised enough funds to, uh, to train and 
and home, three dogs. Three dogs. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Okay, so you did that. You did that. You, you, your ownership in this place led to those things happening. Those are fabulous things, and you, you deserve a lot of credit for doing those. Okay? And we have so many ministries here at St. John's. We have so many. And there's something for everyone. Something for everyone. If you are uh, someone who is a little more meticulous than I am about caring for, uh, for vestments and things, well, yeah, how about... Uh, how about talking to, to somebody about being on the altar guild? There'll be an altar guild table there. And if you like uh, preparing food for someone, how about talking to somebody uh, on our military vets team? Prepares meals every month for, uh, for the veterans of our community. Okay? If, you, uh, if you have a, a voice that you uh, think would be well-suited for the choir, Talk about joining the choir or, or maybe being a reader. Lots of different opportunities to, to take ownership in this parish home and lots of ways to live into our call to follow Jesus Christ. Okay? Because when, when we participate in ministry, we're doing what John did. Okay? Our, our theology of the saints says that we, we look to the saints for examples of ways that we can become closer to Jesus. And I think John did a pretty good job of, of showing how to be close to Jesus because he prepared us for, for the love of Jesus in the world. And you're contributing, when you perform ministry, you're contributing to this church that belongs to you. Okay. Now, I know we've got... Uh, we've got uh, yummy food out there, and we've got games, and so we're, we're anxious to get out there. So I'll, I'll finish up. I'm not going to go much longer. But don't, don't yuck someone else's yum, because everyone's yum might be a little different, and that's okay. That's okay. okay so be like John. Don't be afraid to be a little weird, and don't be afraid to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.